Oh, we live. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh my gosh. What? I didn't. I didn't. It was. It was me. <laughs> I didn't make us an agenda. <laughs> we can. We can. Carlin, We're we flying can blind. Talk. We could. We could like make small talk while you do one. No, no. I'll keep. Uh, I'll keep a piece of paper. It's usually the same. I just need to remember like. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it on paper. <laughs> what is the show time. called? Sheep <laughs> tries <laughs> neurons. <laughs> we are flying <laughs> blind. Oh, we are. <laughs> there's a, there's a sign of like how, how little sleep I had where I just like completely I like got all set up early like I bathed Chainsaw Bunny is lovely yes so Todd, <laughs> this is the bunny show <laughs> Chainsaw Bunny no he's just a nice a nice misunderstood bunny he's a happy happy little rabbit that just happens to have a chainsaw <laughs> Bunny with chains <laughs> Yes. Right. And I like to, uh, I, because it is absolutely not of any significance whatsoever, I would like to point out I have a new, a new background. It's exactly the same background, just <laughs> <laughs> rotated. <laughs> Now you can't here, see. Wait, here, wait. I want to. I want to change my background too. There. Uh, <laughs> there we go. That's it. That's the stuff right there. Uh, oh, where did I put that? Did I put it far away. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Anyway, that's cool. Happy Friday. Happy mm -hmm. Friday. Everybody's in a different place than they usually are. Although I guess. Oh, happy Friday! Really cute. Happy Friday, robot. This is Goldie. Have you you've met Goldie? Not uh, not completely assembled, maybe. Oh. This is Goldie. Goldie can um, <laughs> dance. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> It's a little naughty, maybe, but. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm like, Goldie's gonna have hips. She can dance. She Goldie's can, like, gonna it. have hips. <laughs> are her eyes? I don't know if her eyes are charged. I don't know if they'll. Uh, yeah, mine aren't. <laughs> yeah, her eyes light up. They've got the uh, the mask uh, things mm -hmm. in them. Um, yeah. Very also, cool. Show them lit up at a later date. What you drinking, Carlin? Yeah, what are you drinking, Carlin? I am two fisting it today. Hello. Um, both of which are weird. Um, I am drinking white wine with soda, celery bitters, and a sprig of parsley. What the? Wow. What is it called? Uh, white wine spritzer with celery bitters and parsley. It's called the Frisky Mongoose. The Frisky Mongoose. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> the Frisky, I had to write down. Frisky Mongoose. If a name stops her from drinking because she's laughing, <laughs> that is the name. That is the name. That's a good name. Good name. Um, and then I'm doing something super weird. This is green tea. They gave me a little, like, mm, little but I listened to the gastropod episode on barbecue earlier today, and they mentioned liquid smoke. And so mm. since this is not particularly high-end green tea in this cup, I, sticked, I stuck a bamboo skewer into our little bottle of liquid smoke and then um, mm. stirred it mm. in to this. Um, so now I have like smoky lapsang souchong, like super fancy, like green tea. But it is not. Um, <laughs> That's so. probably how they make some of the cheaper lapsang souchongs, right? <laughs> Just take generic tea and put some liquid smoke on it. A little, little liquid smoke. And so they covered like the history of liquid smoke in that episode and everything. That was, was kind of fun. 
Cool. So yeah. How about you, Barb? What you drinking? I'm drinking. Um, I'm drinking a Modelo. Negro oh, very good. Cerveza. It's good. Appropriate for for Cinco de Mayo plus dos. <laughs> 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 I am. I have a. Oh gosh, wait. How many days is my streak now? I'm like. I'm like, fifty two or fifty three days in my streak on Duolingo. I'm very proud. Oh, right on. For yeah. for for Spanish. For Spanish. Very good. Para español. Qué bien. Debemos practicar porque necesito. Say what? I got a couple words in there. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's not that fast. <laughs> At least not. El uh, <laughs> uh, Services de Bandigas? I have Cervices to say the frisky, to... the the for the frisky par, uh, friskin parsnip uh, is not also, and the frisky. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Sufficiently white girl for all of this. Um, yeah. I'm, the double white girl would be what I am drinking this evening. <laughs> the double white girl. That sounds a little. Um, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What about uh, thanks for existing? Yeah, should we start oh. with those? Mm. Yeah, I know. Did you forget? Mm. I forgot. Since I clearly forgot the agenda, I also forgot. Thanks for existing. Which I is... actually have one. <gasps> Do it. it, it <laughs> Maybe I'll think one. Very far back. Um, my thanks mm. for existing um, is a web page and con and and podcast that look extremely well. Yeah. Um, it looks very, um, sign up for my webinar, mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but she's, uh, she's an ADHD coach. Uh, and I think she does have like, she does have coaching services and stuff. So mm -hmm. like that part makes sense. Um, That's cool. however, she does also have a blog and a podcast. Um, and I have been reading these blog posts and listening to the podcasts and they are exceedingly helpful. Actually. Oh, good. They're, they're, awesome. they're really good. They've got a lot of like specific like tips on how to, uh, ADHD guys. I haven't looked at this one yet, but it's on my list. Uh, ADHD guys, go to ADHD adults guide to the weekly review. Hmm. Um, and it's like kind of talking about like product, like one of the things that you know she's talking about is like productivity and how if you're like just trying to be productive in the same way that neurotypical brains are like you're just going to disappoint yourself and not mm -hmm. like celebrate your strengths um so it's kind of it's kind of great i like it um her like speaking like reading voice you know, like the content is excellent. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. <laughs> the The presentation of it could be better, but the content is is very mm -hmm. good, and I've um, been enjoying it. Cool. Marla Cummins. <laughs> nice. Very nice. How about you, Todd? Were you ever hmm. able to think of anything in the interim? Well, not really. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can go. I can go. We check in ourselves on Wednesday meetings. I know. We really. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe I've said them before, but um, oh, maybe I have. Shoot. <laughs> I mean, just quickly, quickly search the blog. That's fine. Tell us, and we'll let you know, or else you can just tell us again. No, it's not. Okay, I have not mentioned them in the blog. <laughs> At least not with its correct spelling. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Um, so there's this company that makes uh, self-irrigating planters. Mm -hmm. um, let me share. 
This is actually sort of related, uh, Barb, to yours, in that um, there are a lot of plants that I would not be able to keep alive if it wasn't for <laughs> self-irrigating planters because they sort of, uh, they're the capacitors of watering. <laughs> um, excellent, excellent. Well, nice, nice callback. There you go, yeah. They're the capacitors <laughs> yeah. of watering. You know, they have this uh, water reservoir at the bottom um, that buffers buffering that buffers your watering mm -hmm. schedule not all plants uh thrive in one but the ones that do um uh are useful to me it's useful to me because it's sort of um i've made diy um self-irrigating planners blah, blah 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 these are really well engineered it's a german company it's the same company that makes playmobile parts so like occasionally i'll get a box that says playmobile um they're, they're pretty pricey in terms of like pots that I would buy, um, but they have sales every once in a while. Um, and so I have found of the self-irrigating planters available, um, many actually will like instantly kill your plants um, because they just like don't, <laughs> they aren't well designed. Like the, the actually plants really sit in water. But what's nice about the Lechuza planters um, that they've probably like, it's probably patented um, because I don't see it in a lot of other um, things is uh, they have a little, even on their little ones, they have this little pop-up so you can see how much water is in the planter. Um, so that's nice. Yeah, little pop-up school. Little pop-up school, really, when really When it works, we, like we've had one that like jammed, yeah. At, at like at a set, at like stuck at one one position. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you do have to like periodically <laughs> whack them to like make sure they're still floaters. Mm -hmm. um, but you know they're really they're really well done, um, high quality. Uh, the new ones that they make um, have these like lift outs, so you can actually um, get just the lift out part, um, and so you can like swap in different plants into the bigger planters different types of years, which I think some of the more people, commercial people use them. Um, I have to say they're just really, uh, gosh, um, they're decently attractive and they work and mm -hmm. they keep things alive for me. I'm, I don't think I, anyway, uh, these are different orchid ones. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so thank you, Lechuza, for making self-watering planters. <clears throat> that um, helped me not kill some plants, some plants, like some like, it, it, Spathophyllum is probably a good one for this. Um, some, again, some plants don't like having wet feet no matter like how you do it. So they're like not a great fit for every plant, but um, yeah, I, there are more, I can grow more plants than I used to be able to grow because of <laughs> these fancy planters. Those are attractive. Very fancy. <laughs> I, I don't. I have mixed feelings about the uh, about the head one. The Playmobil head, yeah, yeah. There's a it's I like guess a company modern time. chia pet. <laughs> I mean, like I feel like you could do. Like if the hair was green, maybe. Like you can. You, like, I feel like you you can choose that. Like, it's a color choice. <laughs> it is a color choice. Um, <laughs> see, I would disagree. I would think that you would want uh, like a counter countervailing color but I'm okay with the counter with a different color but i feel like it should be all the way to the end so it looks like it's actually hair ah, i see you're saying. Just a thing growing out of your head <laughs> maybe the green one with that I would, would blend like a cow lick or something got it got it got it got it got it i see what you're saying yeah i see what you're saying the silhouette uh, you're not wrong all right i will not look at the sale i'm sure there's a sale right now no nope. anyway <laughs> I have like every year I ask for a new Lechuza planter for Christmas, like every year. And they, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Ooh. Um, nasturtiums. Yeah. They could probably grow nasturtiums. I think they could probably totally grow nasturtiums. Um, uh, you might get them started in something smaller. Um, but yeah, yeah, you could probably nasturtiums. Uh, Nasturtiums would be a uh, good fit, I think. 
Uh, oh, uh, Grant is having a margarito. Margarito. <laughs> margarito. Margarito. It's the it's, it's, it's the boy margarita. Oh dear. <laughs> if you're if you're if you're a guy and you're drinking them, it's margaritas. <laughs> no, that's not true not because we learned. we learned. We learned. We learned. <laughs> from our cocktail, uh-huh. uh, from our cocktail podcast, you people, they uh, that there is a class of drink called a daisy, of which the margarita, because the margarita is the Spanish word for daisy, is a class of that where you have like, um, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's the it's the drink algorithm of a daisy. Um, so you could get like a whiskey <laughs> daisy or a gin daisy. Um, anyway. That's yeah, it's 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 really fun. If you uh if you want to drink cocktails at four thirty on a Thursday, um, this 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 uh crew of people who are like professional baristas stream every Thursday, and uh, this week yesterday was how to make a margarita, like their fancy margarita, not like the kind I'm used to, where you get the margarita mix from Spartan Final and the you know Seven <laughs> Eleven tequila, and you mix it together. It's not that at all. <laughs> These are definitely Cadillac, Cadillac margaritas, I just wanted to say. Yes, these are Cadillac margaritas. Uh, well, do you want that to be your thanks for existing? No, my thanks for existing is a screen I'm sharing right now. Ooh. And so it is, this is, uh, it, it's called TIO, T-I-O, and it's a command line tool that's like screen. If you've ever, ever had to connect to dev- devices over serial ports, um, you might have used screen uh, in the terminal. TO is like that, but easier and better. And um, and the most the best thing about it, because I mean I've been doing a lot of Circuit Python stuff. Best thing about it is it will automatically reconnect when you reset your board, which is a problem. Like this is something the Arduino serial manager has done now for about maybe three years, which is really handy. But um, normal normal command line tools don't do that. Once you disconnect, it just like kills the program because that's what you're supposed to do. You know, you, you've closed the connection and so you quit. This one doesn't, if you want it to, it'll just keep going. But yeah, so that's that's my thanks for existing. I've been using it a ton this last week, so. <laughs> Excellent. T-I-O. Terminal I-O, I think is what it stands for. Mm. Yo, T-O. T-O. T-O, that's a word. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. Um, so I can type it in the terminal here. What, uh... T.O. and Marla Cummins. T.O. Yeah. I have to read that. T.I.O. <laughs> dot GitHub <laughs> dot dot I.O. It's a URL that's also in iambic pentameter. T.T.P. S. colon slash slash. So I can put that in the notes later. Um, we connect to pies too. Uh, all right, so. all right. Well, are we ready that. to? Um, are we ready to <laughs> talk transistors, semiconductors, sure. etc. Yeah. Not not full conductors. Semiconductors. Those, those, those layabouts. Those semiconductors. Quasi conductors. <laughs> Quasi conductors. Uh, they are. That is exactly. <laughs> Part time conductors. <laughs> <laughs> you and me. Part time conductors. <laughs> Lazy. Oh, geez. I want this tag. I want this tag. Part time conductors. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> we are circuit is using three, count them, three. Wait, we're going. <laughs> uh, I'm doing a little black there. LED is a PN. Yeah. Uh, we're using N, P, N. What? Three. So we've got LEDs, light emitting diodes. We've got transistors. In our particular case, we're going to be using NPN transistors. And then we've got the oddball in the group, the LDR. Um, gosh, I don't even know. Latter-day resistor. It's like a... 
Oh dear. Church of Latter Day Resistance. Ah. <laughs> uh, Carlin, for, for me and anybody in the audience who doesn't want to say it, could you real fast tell us uh, what PNN are? Uh, yeah, I'm not, it's not even going to be real fast. I, that is absolutely, oh, okay. that is absolutely <laughs> part of the plan. Uh, it's going to be slow and annoying. And yeah, Carlin, we get it. Um, <laughs> She's setting the stage. I'm just setting the stage. Setting the stage. That means stage. I can understand it more. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, don't forget to draw the schematic symbol for the dot for the LED. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's actually quite important. So that's like a normal diode. Our light emitting diode has photons leaving it. Boop. Pew, pew. And there's yeah, and there's another one which we are going to mention perhaps if we have time, like right at the end, is the photodiode, which has the photons going into it. Sure, sure. Sounds great. <laughs> um, so honestly, all of these three are generally made out of the same two materials um, uh, with a slightly different form factor, maybe with a little extra special something, something on the LEDs. Um, but if you, um, what? I'm laughing at the at what I'm typing. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, to distract you. Oh, okay. Um, so what this P stands for and what this N stand for, um, are the types of silicone, uh, silicon, um, I was like so careful there, like saying the one that I didn't think was right. And that was, <laughs> uh, yeah, My silicone. P type silicon and we got N type. Silicon. I will spell things wrong. Just maybe. Anyway, that'll do. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so what happens is silicon has like four little electrons on its outer valence cell. Boop, boop, boop. And so it's like really happy hanging out in its own little crystal lattice. It makes like a nice, nice lattice. And there's some videos about this in the um uh, YouTube playlist that do a, like nice swoopy animations, blah, blah, blah. So all of these little silicon, um, yeah, it's actually a crystal, which is like, it blows me, blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what happens in the silicon that's P type, let's take out that one and erase one of its electrons and you put boron in there. And so your P type is this like scratchy, holy silicon with lots of room for charges to sort of like fill in. It's like a sponge. Bum, bum, bum. Um, the N type, let's put R, has an extra. Um, that's a that's a oh, phosphorus that's atom, yeah. Yeah, which is not P. Oof. No, it isn't. I, I thought it was. It is okay. Someone I check. I don't know. Uh, anyway, it's meant to be phosphorus there, and so this is boron, and this is phosphorus, and um, so you've got this sort of like ooey gooey oily part and this sort of dry spongy part, and electrons which are going this way current is going that way. Electrons like skate across the N type and wail into the P type and they need to have enough pressure so they don't get stuck in the P type. And so for our purposes, they need around 0 0.6 volts if it's a regular diode. LEDs will be like, I think our red LED is 1.7 volts to more. <laughs> Uh, depending on your mm -hmm. um, your LED, so the little red LED that we'll be using um, is is one point seven volts. Um, but your normal like rectifier diode is like usually zero point six volts. Um, and so and so you can think about what direction a diode needs to be in 
in a circuit by it's like, oh, it's positive to negative, like P type to N type, um, this direction. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right. So <laughs> what's neat about LEDs, and there's a great picture in the Practical Electronics for Inventors um, book that I'm probably going to get wrong. But you'll get the gist. Because um, you basically have a little reflector bowl, a little PN junction inside a little reflector bowl that is transmissive through. So there's this lens here, which is one of the reasons why LEDs have such, have such a narrow, like they're so bright from the top, is because there's this little reflector bowl that a PN junction is sitting in that's sending things out. Boop, 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 boop. And much like um, a uh, piezo-based beeper can be a piezo-based microphone, um, LEDs can be photodiodes and photodiodes. Um, although, you know, I've never tried to use a photodiode as an LED. They may not be doped correctly um, to get real light going out of them. Um, but LED, everything, <laughs> everything uh, glows once with enough power. <laughs> oh, there you go. Everything glows once with enough power. Um, uh, it's absolutely true. Uh, and, uh, yeah, anyway, boop, boop. so you can try using, if you have LEDs and not a photodiode, you can try using one of your LEDs as a photodiode. <laughs> yes. Um, now NPN transistors. Uh, our bipolar junction transistors. So we're not talking about effects. We're not talking about field effect transistors. Um, the name came from transforming resistor. That's what a, really what they were trying to invent. Transforming resistor. Um, transistor just in case anyone was wondering what that was. Transforming my brain. Woohoo! <laughs> um, and you can see on our NPN transistor, there's this little arrow. Let's pretend that's ground. Let's pretend this is five volts. Um, our current is gonna go this way through the base and this way through the... Um, Collector, so we have something called the collector, we have something called the emitter, and we have something called the base. And so when you have uh, hooked one of these up, say to control a motor for an Arduino, and you're like putting your pin high on this like middle thing, you're using that PN junction. Same as a diode, PN junction. Uh, to get current running this way. And once this area, this P area, is like those little holes over here, start filling up with electrons, then, excuse me, with charge, not with electron, with charge, um, with electric field, um, then, then the current can zip this through this way. Now to, boop, boop, boop. All right, and just like a diode, you need an at least a 0 0.6 volt difference, at least between these two things to get this to even turn on. Even turn on. So we'll see then, more of that in a minute. Boop, boop, boop. Here are a couple of examples. I wonder, actually, if we go back, I wonder, can, if I hold this up close enough, can we see Will it focus? Todd, maybe, yeah. So on that long hockey stick leg, I don't know if you can quite tell, but there's like a little, little reflector dish. If it wasn't a diffuse lens, if it was a clear lens, I bet you could see it even yeah. better. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, I don't think I have any of those around. Um, I can pull, I'll pull up, a, I've got an image here. Oh yeah. You've got you've got the power of the internet. Yep. Uh, share this. There we go. 
Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Woohoo! You can see the two little wires coming off of the middle part. Very cool. So that's the that's the cup there, huh? Yeah, a little reflector dish. Yeah. Um. So. Wonder. Okay. No, not easy. Um. All right. So back. Hello. Look back here. Refocus camera. Put your hand in front. Oh, there you go. Maybe, maybe. There we go. All right. So transistors will come in different packages. This is the, we're going to be talking about ones that are in the TO92 package. Um, these, the ones in the bigger package, which I believe is 220? TO220? Um, yes, TO220. Thank you. Um, is uh, they come with a heat sink, which is nice because uh, one of the things that bipolar jan bipolar junction transistors do is they generate generate some heat during their operation. Um, so if you're doing bigger bigger loads on your current emitter side, you definitely want to use one of these TO220 things. But this is. TO92. Um, in a lot of the ones that uh, come in hobbyist kits, their legs are uh, looking at them this way. I can't tell them that my flat side is facing up. Um, it's emitter base collector. So again, base Oop, emitter collector base. Um, on a PNP transistor, it's a little different. It's typically emitter here. And and that's, again, if you look at the, oops, I'm like, sorry. If you look at a PNP, oops, P and P, This is the emitter, the base, and the collector. Um, this is the, the typically the ground side. But notice that that, that, that PN junction is this way. And so when we talk about hooking these up to a voltage divider, we'll talk about that again. But just this PN junction, like the diode, is going this way. And this one's going this way. And this will, this will uh, lead us to some like different applications of like why you would do one over the other. <laughs> um, all right, our last thing, and we'll come back to the transistor more, is this light-dependent diode. Excuse me, light-dependent resistor. Right? Yup. LER. Um, LER. And so... The old timeies called them photocells. The old timeies do call them photocells. They're super toxic. <laughs> they have cadmium in them. Like, don't throw them in your yard. Um, don't lick them. Don't lick them. Don't lick them. Don't lick them. Um, well, so we'll talk about alternatives to photo detecting things um, after we hook this up because it's just it's just such an easy variable resistor. Like it's it's just such an easy cheap variable resistor that it's just used in hobbyist projects like all the time as a proof of concept. Um, and so, so we'll keep, we'll keep doing it. Uh, that is a, not a silicon based one. Uh, as I mentioned, it's cadmium. So it's not like silicon based with cadmium. Um, what it is actually typically is, see, I wrote it down, um, cadmium sulfide. And so when light hits that, then the, it's normally pretty stable, but when light hits it, the electrons in it get a little like more gooey gooey and like loose, loosey goosey. And then, then, then more current goes through it. And so uh, light means less resistance. 
So I like to think of them, um, yeah, light means more resistance. Excuse me, less resistance, wait, more connectivity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm like, wait, I'm like, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like that. I don't even think like, this is more like. Nice. Draw the arrow bigger. Draw the arrow bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you can get out of this. You can get out of this. Yeah. Here we go. Light means lower resistance. Woohoo. All right. Okay. So let's talk about the circuits. Shall we? Shall we? Does anyone yes. have any question about any of that? Questions, questions, questions. Queries, complaints? Query. Yeah. So, Barb, uh, cool. Uh, Thanks, Grant. Yeah. All right. So that's Are we going to show our, screen, our, our desks now? Yeah, you guys, can, you guys should start building your circuits. Desk time. Because I already have that. Oh, ah Boom. oh, man. Cheater. I get to be, yeah, I get to be the like, and look at my lasagna fresh out of the onion oven. I'm ready. <laughs> I have mine too, but I will take it apart. We build it, we build it. I already have okay. some of the parts. First, I'm gonna hook up, make sure my power supply works. Okay. Try to remember what so I did. let me share. Let me share the screen. Hmm. View. Ha ha. Yeah. Ha ha. Fiat Lux, bitches. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are two <laughs> different circuits. Uh, the one on the left detects when we have light, and the one on the right detects we when we have dark. Okay, so let's talk about that for just one second. Um, so if you've worked with Arduino. <laughs> Arduino. I've worked with Arduino. You gotta say it like that. Arduino. Uh, and you look at your digital end pin, you have like a digital in. Sometimes, sometimes you'll wire your switch to five volts with a pull down resistor. Right? And then mm -hmm. your digital in will be high when the switch is closed. So it will be like, and usually a lot of times that means we'll use it as true. Like, it's on, poo poo. This is gonna see five volts when this switch is closed. That's, let's get rid of true because that's actually sort of semantically meaningless. You're gonna see some value that's, we say five volts, but it's like kind of like anything. If it's a five volt board, I think it's typically, um, if it's like over three volts-ish, it'll give you, it could be it could be a narrower band. I have not checked that spec in a really really long time. Um, <laughs> another thing you might do though is um, because this isn't actually like the electrical engineering like best practice way because um, microcontrollers are better at sinking power than sourcing power. So like the best practices way. Wait, where am I going? Here's your little micro, here's the Arduino. Arduino. Ooh. <laughs> Arduino. Um, uh, is you would, boom, 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 actually wire your switch up to ground and put a pull up resistor here. And so when the switch is closed, you would see probably actually around zero volts, depending on what things are going on. Um, so your like truth statement would be like, oh, I'm getting what I want because this is low. Um, so if you look at our circuit, can you pull up the circuit again, Barb? Mm -hmm. Awesome. If you look at our circuit, um, our LDR, which is something that has less, con less resistance, more conductivity, the sort of the switch closes, 
on top of our little, let's say switch and voltage, like switch and um, pull down resistor circuit. So when this is wide open, when it's dark, uh, we're not gonna, it's gonna see zero volts. And when it closes, i.e. when light starts hitting it, we're gonna see five volts. We're gonna get our truth condition. We're gonna see our LED light up. Versus on this half of the circuit, um, when it's when this switch is open, when it's dark out, um, we're gonna we're not we're gonna see five volts on this, and here five volts is not what we want. Excuse me, we're gonna see. Uh, slow down. <laughs> uh, it's it's nodding. It's like pulling down when the light uh, shines on this. Oops, when the light shines on this. it's closed. And so it's shunting this all down to zero volts. And so it's, it's, it's creating a knot in our circuit. Does that make any sense? I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. Um, I should have set up that circuit. Um, <laughs> Let's try again. All right. Oh no, new paper. New paper, all right. So that's what if you wanna think about your LDR like in a switch light way. But what we're really dealing with though is a variable resistor. And I'm gonna talk about it in a, I'm gonna stick with the, let's do this, all right. This is 10K and this is 10K. What's my voltage here? What's the, what's the top voltage? It's five volts. Five. This is 10K and this is 10K. What's my voltage here? Okay. No, five, five volts. No, wait, two and a half. Yes, 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 it's two and a half. I remember this from- Two point five volts. <laughs> awesome. Okay, it's in the middle. So if, if this is five volts, that's a little tricky. Um, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's make this easy. -er. If this is 200 ohms and this is 300, ohms what's this voltage how would we figure that out um. so how we would figure that out is because the, either one the first one was easy because it was like they were the same so we know that like our 50 percent is in the middle and so if a hundred percent is five volts and the 200 Ohms. I mean, it'd be Plus. either two or three. I'm just not sure which, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you caught that, that I was trying to add up to 500. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You, all right, you, made it, you made it easy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's going to be, this is going to be a three volt drop, and this is going to be a two volt drop. because V equals I R. So this current going, the same amount of current is going through both of these. And so that means that the voltage is gonna be directly proportional to the resistance. It's gonna be that ratio, right? So when we're dealing with a transistor in the mix, we're gonna have our Five volts here. I know, like, if I was like a modern, modern microcontroller user, um, I would probably be using three point three volts, but five is easier for me to do math with. Um, on our transistor here, this is our load. 
And for our, like this is five volts for the example circuit, but this is sort of like, like, you know, whatever voltage you want. Well, not quite whatever voltage you want, but. <laughs> One million volts. <laughs> and then the transistor. Um, So remember, this is our collector. This is our emitter. I better draw it. Boop, boop, boop. This is our base. And this is a PN junction. And this voltage here has to be higher than this voltage here. And so in our example circuit, which is not a very fancy circuit, there's not some like crazy signal coming in here. We're slamming it to ground. So E will always be like pretty close to zero volts over here. If we wanted to, we could add another resistor here. Um, you would do that for reasons. Um, <laughs> reasons. For reasons, particularly if you're like trying to stabilize an audio signal. Um, but for our purposes, um, we're just like our simple, simple LDR circuit. Um, we're slamming it to zero. Um, one of the reasons is actually is because in manufacture, uh, Transistors are really unstable. Like they, the their ability to switch changes depending on the temperature. Um, so like as they work, they'll change a little. And so you start adding resistances in to like make everything a little more stable um, to sort of like drown out the uh, manufacturing imperfections in your transistors by controlling it. And so this is zero volts. And so as we pick our resistor ratios here, we just like always, since this is an NPN transistor, like we always kind of want it to be slightly downhill because we always want to make sure that our current has enough oomph to like roll through this PN junction. Remember, it's got to be like at least 0 0.6 volts. So we kind of like, this is an NPN transistor and we want it to roll downhill. If you're using a PNP resistor, um, the emitter is actually up on this side typically and you're gonna have it roll this way. But that's a whole other story. Um, then we're focusing on NPNs. But so that's one of the big differences between PNP transistors and NPN transistors is um, on NPN resist resistors, you want it to roll downhill through the base out the emitter. Um, and on PNP transistor, you're kind of like gonna let it roll downhill from the emitter into out the base. Um, that makes sense. So when we're deciding what, how to hook up our light dark detecting circuits, what we're doing here is we have a resistor here because remember it's a PN junction over here and just like LEDs need a current limiting resistor, um, the base to emitter PN junction on your bipolar junction transistor also needs a current limiting resistor. So we've got to put something here. So let's just call that like 100 ohms, like for example. Um, E.g. Yeah, yeah. And then what we have, this would actually be like, you would never use one that low. And then you have your LDR. Um, and the reason why you would ever, I'll just like start with like, my example circuit over here, boop, boop, boop. My example circuit over here. Um, my simple example circuit uses an LDR and a, this is a, Oh shoot, it's a 1K, I think I, that's a mistake. Um, <laughs> Oops. Oh, is it 10K? Please tell me it's at least 10K, yes, it's 10K. Um, <laughs> so that orange looks kind of red there for a minute. Um, so it's 10K, uh, depending on your batch of LDRs, what the right balance is for you will change, but it's also how responsive do you want it to be? Because remember, the ratio of these two moves this hill up and down, up and down and up and down. So this, this sort of, this light dependent resistor, when it's dark out, is taking up a lot of space. 
But then as it gets lighter out, it kind of like shrinks down more and maybe it goes below the threshold. Just a little bit, just a little bit of resistor. And then your charge can't roll down the hill anymore and your light goes off. Does that make sense? Yup. All right. Um, and the other, so, the other, the other thing I've noticed with uh, with these these LDRs is that they're each one is a little different, mm -hmm. and also the time of day. Like when we were doing this before, we were doing this at a slightly different time of day, mm -hmm. and so like I actually had to change my resistor value that goes on the other side of the LDR because it's like, oh, it's brighter out, or my camera setup different, or this LDR is a little bit different than the one I was using a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> So that's actually, thank you. That is the perfect segue, Todd. Um, so if you notice, my uh, green LED isn't lighting up. I cover it, it's not lighting up, it's not lighting up. Um, what happens is if I change my trimmer pot here, it becomes a lot more sensitive. Let me turn down the light here. Oh, you've got a you. trimmer pot. I got a turn pot. See, as I turn off the light, the, the red one is like, oh, yeah, that's dark enough for me, just as it is. Great. Um, but what I've done here is I've added a trimmer pot in series with, mm, with my LDR so I can tune it. I can tune it to my current ambient situation. Yeah. And so, like, if I want, I want it to be off at ambient, but... So I can tune it now. <laughs> because what's happening there is if I've put now, I'm deciding, if you know, if you're in a fixed lighting situation, you might know exactly what fixed resistor to put in here to make sure that when the, that the, when the LDR sort of like expands just exactly where you want it, you're going uphill. So you sort of like shove it up. Because it's the ratio of these two things. And if you sort of like lock, well, it, the ratio here is gonna be at least 50-50, well then it's not gonna take much darkness to like shrink that down and turn um, off my LED. Bum, bum, bum. Aha, now I've made a reflectance sensor. Yeah. As it reflects off the, the shiny, shiny sticker, <laughs> it turns on the LED. <laughs> That's totally, that is exactly like uh, emitter receiver pairs are like definitely a, <laughs> like a really important, whether it's like infrared or. This show more. brought to you by Perfect Circuit. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday when you start talking about the <laughs> oh, yeah, target. <laughs> All right. So back to sharing the screen, Barb, if you get a chance. Uh -huh. <laughs> no sharing. No sharing. We don't do that. I want to talk about these two circuits. If I can find. <laughs> Ooh, we haven't built those yet. No, we haven't. And we're not building them tonight. Um, these are your alternatives to LDRs. Um, the one on the left, and I had one earlier today. Um, I have stuck it somewhere. Oh. Anyway, the one on the left is using a photo transistor instead of an LDR. These are both dark detecting. They're both, so if you notice, our sensor is on the bottom half of our voltage dividing. It's like nodding it out. Um, and so it's the inverse logic of what we want to do. And and I didn't put, I put sort of like vague examples of what you want, um, you might want your resistors to be. This is a current limiting resistor. And it's important that um, this is current limiting. And the, um, photo transistors, some of them will be two-legged and look kind of just exactly like a clear LED, um, which is what the one that I had 
earlier today. I have tucked it somewhere. It's probably like under my computer. Um, uh, goodness. Um, anyway. Um, so it's basically going to either it's going to operate like a depending on the properties of the actual part that you get, it's either going to act like a very fast switch. One of the things about LDRs is that they are have some slowness to react as the sort of light warms them up. Uh, photo transistors and photo diodes are much more sensitive and they will be much more responsive. So you might actually use our circuit from last time to add a capacitor and to sort of buffer things anyway to get the actual behavior out of the LED the same way you want it. Um, but again, the transistors in the bottom half of the voltage divider, um, turning it off like a switch. Um, the other circuit is a little more interesting. So photodiodes don't pass as much current as, as other things. Uh, they, their signal is a little weaker. And so you might need to amplify it up a little bit. And so one of the things that we didn't talk so much about is the HFE or beta of a transistor. And it's sort of like, okay, so this leg of the circuit can control up to, let's say a hundred times of its level of current. And so here, this one is now, that's a hundred times, that's a hundred times times that. So we've got four zeros going on there. So this is like 10,000 times the current is going over here. Um, which means actually you can get away with pretty giant resistors over here. You don't actually need um, a ton of current going through to control things very much. So here are some examples of amplified things. And I just used switches instead of, so these are all dark detecting circuits. Ooh, simulator. Yeah, this link was in the blog post. So I've used giant, giant, for me, transistor values. Boom, boom, boom. The amplifying. Um, what you're seeing here on that, how is that link down here? Um, what you're seeing here, again, notice that this transistor is in the bottom half of this transistor's voltage divider. So again, when this is activated, this one's going to be off. So that is why the diode is over up in the top half over here. So it's like, true, no, so I'm off. This is like false. I'm off, which means I'm on. <laughs> like, so they're like, yeah, so. Wait, now you can start making an oscillator then. <laughs> well, we will be doing that soon. So the second circuit I said, like, it's more of a is not light versus then is dark um, <laughs> going on, going on here. These are alternatives to LDR circuits, although very similar. All right, how are you guys doing on your, so Todd, you built a, um, oh, fancy layout. Todd, you built your your beam break circuit the over first there. St the first stage of my of my super mega alarm system. This is gonna, you know, if the cat walks across the beam break, it triggers the, Water gun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a use for transistors. Uh, Barb, how's your circuit going? Uh, we okay. So we got this going on Wednesday. Yeah. But it occurs to me we got it going at the end of the day, mm -hmm. or at the end of the evening when it started getting real dark, mm -hmm. and I it is not working, and I'm not 100 percent certain whether I have it wired up wrong. Or if it's just that I don't have freaking the right freaking. Do you have a flashlight? I mean, <clears throat> I've got the super bright lamp that's right next to it. Oh wait, no. Yeah, it's okay. Not. So you want it? So the super bright lamp is handy because then then we'll know we have enough light to turn it off. So into your. What's the 
resistor there balancing out your LDR? Uh, brown, black, orange. Brown, oh, 10, 10, 10K. black, or 10K. That should be okay. But I noticed that that's going to ground instead of power. Yeah, so you want the LDR to ground okay. and the resistor to power. Okay, but it's still not. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's one step at a time. Um, and then your middle, your middle thing on the transistor, mm -hmm. those are both going to that. That red wire is going to the middle of the transistor. Yep. Great. Those are all in the same row. And I think that black wire to ground, is that in the same row as the transistor leg? The one that's coming off the top rail into the one, two, three, fourth yes. row. Is. Yeah, the question is, is it actually all the way in there? And that's the flat side of the resistor facing, of the transistor facing the red wire? Correct. Okay, great. And now your LED is on, so we know it's wired correctly, but is it, is it in the same row as the far leg of your yeah. transistor would have to be? Okay, so yeah, I don't know why it's not turning off. All right, let's try a um, bigger oh, oh, resistor. Oh, wait, this popped out, hang on. Ha ha! Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, Excellent. I've had those problems. Uh, <laughs> as totally. Do it, okay, good. It works. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, I'm glad that I actually got my Red circuit boards. wired up proper properly ish. Mm -hmm. Um I did switch these back and forth a few times because I was Yeah, it was a it was a it would have been a light detector. It would have been working. Oh, so I, if I just switch them I can Mm-hmm. If you switch those, then it's a light detector. Oh, except for the fact, what's the problem with that? What's the problem with this circuit? Oh crap. I don't know. The problem uh, with the circuit is there's smoking. no current limiting resistor between the LED, the between power and the base of the transistor if it's fully on. So you would need to add another resistor in series with the LDR. Oh, here. Uh, yeah, yeah. The one that I, that I ignored because I didn't have a freaking 100K. Yeah, yeah. So just so just leave it with the LDR to ground and the and the fixed resistor to power. Make it my 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 dark detector. There are laser diodes. They would be um and the uh, those would be considered a load, <laughs> and you would put them on the top half of your MPN circuit. <laughs> and between the voltage and the collector. <laughs> Carlin, I'm trying to be snarky here. <laughs> no, no, lasers are a perfectly valid thing to want to turn on. Like, I, sorry. Uh, 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 I'm going to do the thing, the thing that I did that I liked so much. Oh, yeah. This was great. This was fun. Yeah. Well, I think we've hit the, oh, the beeper. Beep. Mm -hmm. I think we've hit the, the day, the end of the day. We have hit the end of the day. Any any questions before we wrap up? Oh, because I put it to the different. Here. Yeah, I know. No, I don't want you on all the time. That's annoying. I like the <laughs> beep now and then. <laughs> it will there beep when it wants to beep. There we go. My circuit is a cat. It doesn't listen to me. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm hearing, literally, is that Barb is going to have a buzzer in her project for next week. <laughs> oh yes. There. Uh, there's probably going to be sound. Yeah, I've got yeah. laser. Oh, yeah, laser. Laser. Excellent. So what we've introduced in our like so again, I'm not going to like I don't I don't know that we need to be like super uptight about like is this circuit exactly the same? Um, I think it's more like use a resist like use a variable resistor and a load that needs to be transferred. Like, I think just the presence of a transistor is gonna be good enough. And no yeah. microcontroller. Hitting hitting this tiny target with my, with my laser is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, so I've made a game. I've made a little laser game. You have made a little <laughs> laser game. 
That's really satisfying. <laughs> Those of you have made like really satisfying interactions. I love it. Uh, <laughs> defeating the point of the laser. <laughs> How close can I get? <laughs> love it. Dollar store lasers. Gotta love them. Oh, yeah. I, I would pull one out right now, but the cats would be on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They can hear the sound of that button from oh, the seriously click -click the switch, yeah. all the way. Like there could be like multiple shut doors. They would hear it. Oh my goodness. They, <laughs> they know that sound. I love it. Laser cutters, cats, laser pointers, cats, and transistors. I'm sure. Mm. I'm sure we can work with that. Oh, speaking of which. Oh. Pew pew. Pew pew, pew 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 pew. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carlin. For joining. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Carlin, for showing us. I hope that was a little more intelligible than my explanations on Wednesday. I, like that's nice. Great. It's nice for me to have the, like the <laughs> practice. <laughs> yeah. No. You you helped uh, us understand it. You helped me understand an it better. Awful lot of drink left. So this is the, also the flaw. Yeah. <laughs> that's true next week you can just drink the whole time and we'll show what we made yeah Yay. cheers cheers folks <laughs> see you next week see you next week <laughs>